Welcome, we're gonna be painting this vintage tea box today, which is a companion piece to a class that I had um, put together before. And I have the instructions for this design on my website. So you can just go to my website, I have a link below, and download the instructions um, along with the photograph. But you're gonna be learning enough today to paint that design. Um, and this will just be a, a cute little companion piece. The sides are painted like this, um, the sides of the box are painted like the size of that little plaque that I had done. And so you'll be able to learn how to do multiple pieces. Some of the um, supplies you're going to need is you're going to need the, um, the set of cling stamps. Um, and also I have that listed in the instructions. You'll also need a few acrylic candles to stick the uh, cling stamps on. And you'll need some deco art acrylic paints and because all of my stamping is done with paints. And those are also list all of the colors are listed in the instructions. And then you'll need some basic acrylic painting supplies, some brushes, some palette paper and paper towel. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to begin by placing the bird onto a acrylic candle. And it's very important that the acrylic candle does not have dirt or oils on it from your hands. And the same with the stamp, otherwise it's not going to stick. So this way it will stick really nice and even. And try really hard um, if you're using a stamp that's a little bit smaller than your handle to place it in the middle so that when we impress it, it will be impressed e evenly. Now I've already, I've already base coated the um, lid to this box with one coat of light buttermilk. And I wanted the wood grain to show through because this is kind of have like a little vintage look to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I have already dampened my mushroom stamp and I've loaded it with soft black. And you can see that there's no paint built up on this at all. I go into more detail um, in my one video on how to stamp backgrounds and I will have a link to that below in the video. So I very quickly start at one end and load. Because this, the mushroom sponge is loaded with the paint, it's just like a stamp pad. So that's why you can so easily um, just go over the bird. And he's going to go pretty much on an angle and just a little bit off center. And then I don't rock my hand, I just press very firmly. And so you can see how nice and, and easy it is to get a nice impression. So then the first thing I'll do is I will take a um, baby wipe and we'll just wipe this off. And the fact that the stamps are rubber, if I were to let this dry, it would come off really easy. But it's just really easy to, to form a habit of cleaning your stamp as soon as you're done with it. Now, what I love about the Stampendous um, stamps is that they also come with these little um, masks. So I'm going to just put this right over my bird. And I do have some double-sided tape on the other side. And so I'm not sure if you can see uh, um, see this. It's kind of shiny, and I do have paint all over it. But that's now going to um, protect the image that I just put down. So I'm going to come in, and I'm going to put my branch on. And you can kind of figure out where you want to um, go with this. So now, the mask doesn't cover up the feet. So what we're going to do is we're going to load this really quick with some burnt umber. And I'm going to use the same sponge. I'm just reloading it. So I just used the same sponge and came in. And I will quickly go over that. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to have a dampened brush off to the side. And you're going to see what I'll do to keep it off of the bird's um, feet. So I want to put this on an angle and we'll go right over his feet. 
Then what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to just take a dampened brush and wipe away from the feet. Okay, and I'm also going to just kind of erase this really quick. Just wipe that away. And that is a little bit smudgy, but it will just add to the aged look. And then I'm going to come in and reload this branch and continue it. Maybe this time I'll make it go this way. And you can see now we have a really nice big branch. Now I have this um, I have this stencil um, and it's a nice metal stencil and I'm looking to see where the lettering is on that because then I know that it is in the correct position. With this particular um, stencil it would be the same no matter which way you put it. And generally I like to um, lay it down and um, have it taped down. But I don't have that opportunity because this is bigger than my lid, which is really kind of unusual. So I'm taking my stencil, and what I love about these metal stamps is, is you can use the dry brushing um, approach. So what I'm going to do is take out most of the paint out of my brush, and this is spa blue that I'm using. And I'm just going to go in the outer corners and I'm using a very light pressure and I'm just circling the brush and then as especially as I come in towards the center I just kind of lift it and let it fade away. This is not going to cover the whole background and just kind of letting this go in the outer corners of the box. Okay, let's see how Oh, that's perfect. I just wanted it to look really kind of worn away. And so we're going to come over and, and we're going to do a few other things to make it look um, aged. Now, notice I didn't come over here. Now, if you wanted to, you could paint the sides spa blue because this fits in here and overlaps. Or what you can do is just come over and kind of hold this in place, only because this is a little bit hard to do, I think I'm going to just do the pouncing, where you come up and down, and this will give me a little bit of a pattern, and again, I don't want this to be perfect, because I'm going to eventually come over here and um, make it look a little bit more aged. I just want to give it a similar pattern to what's up above on the rest of the lid. And again, you could just paint this um, solid spot blue. And I'm continuing this now with light buttermilk and I'm using the dry brushing technique again. pretty good and I've done the rest of the sides. Now what I want to do is I want to age this a little bit more so I have a um, old um, sea sponge here and I, I've mixed some fawn and light buttermilk together and I've pounced it into the sponge so that um, you can um, see the individual um, textures of the sponge. And what I'm going to do is very 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 lightly go over the background. Now I still have the mask here and this isn't really not going to do much to the to the to the branch. 
So I'm going to go around the outside and do the same thing. And remember, I'm pouncing very lightly. If I were to come in really heavy, then I would cover the whole area. And so when you load the sponge, you have to make sure that you load it into the paint and then work it in so you can still see all the little individual textures of the actual sponge. And then when you come down, you're barely touching the surface so that you're not making much um, of an impression at all. But you can see how that aged it a lot. So I want to make sure that I come over here and do the same thing to my, the rest of my box. Now it sounds like I'm hitting this hard, but I'm not. I'm, I'm barely touching it at all. And I didn't stencil the bottom, but I'll just come in and I'll do that. And then I'm going to take and rinse out my brush. And then you're going to take an old flat brush or um, just a worn out brush that's kind of corroded and it's splayed out a little bit. Dampen it a little bit more and just kind of open it up like that. And we're going to take the same color, the fawn and the um, light buttermilk mix, uh, mixture. And we're just going to go around the outside edges, kind of framing it. And I'm just pouncing this up and down. I'm loading just a small amount into the brush so that you can see that there's not a lot in there. I load my brush and then I pounce it onto my palette paper or if you have a foam plate, that's fine. And then we're just gonna go around the outside edge. Now, yes, I could have created um, more of a heavy texture with the sponge, but that's harder to control. This way, this is nice and controlled and it's just making it look older. I'm not going to cover this whole thing, I'm just going to darken it a little bit more. And then I'm also going to do the same thing on the bottom of the box. Now I've placed the vintage note stamp on an acrylic handle and I have rinsed out my sponge and I'm going to load this very quickly. And I have fawn in it this time so you can see it's just each time I'm getting a little bit darker. Background was light buttermilk, then I went to light buttermilk plus fawn and now I'm into fawn. Press this down, make sure that I use equal amount of pressure. So you can see that this is just going to look at more, make it look a little bit more aged. I reload it a little, again. I think this time I'll bring the scrolls down over here. Then I'll just finish with the back half up over here. And again, I'm going to come in and just rinse over my little feet and, uh, and the branch. Now the branch also has a mask too, so you could have used a mask for that too. Now I can take up my mask and you can see I have a cute little bird and all of this is in the background and it's looking pretty cool. Make sure that as soon as you are done with your mask that you put it back into the container that it came with because otherwise you're going to lose this. This particular stamp set also comes with um, a stencil and so what I want to do is make sure that I have it the right way and that's why I always leave the paint on it once I've used it because that way I know that this lines up correctly. If I were to come in the other way you can see how it would line up with the bird. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some greenery and I'm not sure exactly how I want to do this. I want to make it a little bit different than the original, but I'm still using the same colors. 
Now you can take a cosmetic, cosmetic sponge or you can use your stencil. In this case, I'm going to just use my stencil brush and come over and just pounce up and down. And you can see I already base cutted that very quickly. Put some more leaves over here. Just a few over here. And then I also want to bring in the little leaves. So I'll add a few over here. And maybe some right over here. I like these little leaves, they're nice and soft. Not too many, just maybe some up here. And I'm going to um, put a wash onto the bird um, in the blue areas with the spa blue. It's very important that this is a wash of color because this needs to be transparent. If you don't know how to create a wash of color, I do have a video um, on my channel all about how to create washes and gradients and glazes. So I'll have that listed down below. So you can see that the lines are just glowing through with this light blue color. Now I'm also going to come in the orange areas and uh, put in a wash. And um, I mixed equal amounts of natural buff and terra coral together. And I then thinned it. And I like using an angular brush for applying washes because this way you can get into really small areas. Now I've taken a little bit of um, jay green and mixing it into a burnt um, umber just to make it a little bit lighter brown. And we're going to use that color to stamp the... So I'm using a, a large acrylic candle. You could use a much smaller one. So I'm going to simply over stamp, trying to lay it, align it with what I've just base coated. That looks pretty good. And then we'll use this again over here. again up at the top. And then I'll do the same thing with the smaller leaves. keep it soft I want to pull and just add a few little individual leaves with my liner brush and we'll eventually just um, come in and probably put a wash in them of the same color as the other leaves. This keeps it a little bit softer and then I just connected the two. And I'll do the same thing over here, so I'll just want to make sure that everything's all connected now. I'm going to take the same color and fill in the branch. This is the same color that I just stamped with, and I just created a wash with it. I'm going to just start pulling some lines to give a little bit more depth and dimension to the bird. And this is just more spa blue. 
If your spot of blue came in too heavy, this is not going to show, and you're going to have to add just a touch of Salem um, blue to your um, to your bird. And we're going to come in and add texture and shade at the same time. I have a little bit of the natural buff and I just tipped it a little bit with the uh, terra coral because my brush was dirty. I'm just adding a little bit there. And sometimes I'll go back and forth between the two colors just kind of adding a little bit of depth and a little bit of texture. Then I'll take some straight natural buff and just kind of add a few highlights right here. To the darker areas of the bird, I'm going to come in and just add some more um, darkness. And then I add texture at the same time because I'm pulling lines with my number two round. Now I, I want to say though that um, the blue color really definitely um, dries much darker than when you put it on. So it's almost going to look like the same color. Then all of a sudden you'll notice that it's uh, getting darker as you put it on. So be careful you don't go in too heavy. Get some more of the spot blue. I'm going to just come in and go back over, and I'm going to kind of come over right here. It's really important that your paint is thin just a little bit. And again, I discuss how to do line work in the other video. So this is just my original spot blue and I'm reinforcing the highlight colors now. Now I'm going to take just a little bit of the terra coral and add just a little bit in the darker areas. And again, don't press too hard because if you press too hard, then your lines will be much, much too heavy. We want to create some shades and create texture at the same time. I'll go back into my original color right now because we don't want too much dark. You never want to have dark touching light. I've mixed a little bit of Spy Blue plus um, light buttermilk. And I'm going to add just a little bit more highlights in here. And I'm using more of the tip of the number two round.
put just a few over here. And I think every time I were to paint those bird, it would turn out just a little bit different. And if for some reason you need to add a little bit more dark, I always tend to go back and forth between my lights and my darks. But make sure that you don't eliminate that mid-tone. a wash of soft black and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fill in the feet I'm gonna give this a soft black now I've mixed equal amounts of jade green and burnt upper and I'm just going to shade in the leaves I'm just trying to separate them for right now I'll come back in with a little bit of burnt umber later, as soon as this dries. And I'm just going in the dark areas. And we're going to come in and just add some darkness over the bird. And again, when you're glazing, it's very important that you're going to keep, you, when you're glazing, it's very important that you keep the colors transparent. Because otherwise, it's going to get way too dark. We want to add a little bit of darkness, but we don't want a soft blackbird. So you can see that even though this is soft black, it's just making it look more like um, a darker blue color. And now I'm going to come in and do the same thing with the soft black to the branch. We're going to just come in and make it a little bit darker on the back side. to be glazed, can't be too heavy of a color. And if you need to, you, if you want to create a little bit more texture, you can just pull your brush a little bit. Now to the leaves, I'm going to pull in some dark temper. And I'm going to come in just in the darkest areas with the burnt temper and separate the two. Now if you want to, you can use your liner brush. And if you feel as though I think I've lost a little bit of my lines on the bird. So I'll just come in and add a few more right where they were. Especially on the wing. And that gave it a really nice little extra texture too. I think I'm going to just bop up these highlights just a little bit more. There we go, I think that looks a little bit nicer. Give a little bit of a highlight on the beak. And I 
I'd say I have a really cute little tea box now. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope that you've really enjoyed learning how to do this stamp and paint project. If you're enjoying my videos, please give me a thumbs up, and if you're new to my channel, please subscribe because I'd love for you to join me each time I have a video posted. Also, please click the share button and share my video with all of your friends on Facebook or um, even via email. In my next video, I'm going to talk all about decoupaging, and we're going to continue using this image here. I've actually taken and scanned it in, and I'm going to be using these to create some really wonderful tabletop decor. So I'll help you join me then. And until then, I hope that painting will always bring you joy.